our Extravagant Love Project. We just want to thank you for every dollar that you've sown into this ministry. Dave, yeah. God do really great things every week. Because you gave to Kingdom Builders, there are people who grew up in the inner city who are being trained to go back into the inner city with the gospel to reach people just like themselves. You've built a life home for girls and now we're dedicating a facility you've just built, the retreat at Victory Lane. We're able to go in to China on missions again, reaching over one billion unsaved people. Well, the gifts that you have given have truly changed the lives in Cambodia. 93.6% of our graduates are in the ministry. We're able to evangelize and disciple the university students. We're building the kingdom of God together. I just want to say thank you from the very bottom of our heart. Thank you, Kingdom Builders, for your sacrifice, for your love. Thank you for your unwavering commitment to sharing God's love. You guys make a huge impact around the world. Your gift to Kingdom Builders is making an impact in the world. Thank you, Kingdom Builders. Your giving is making an impact. Come on, everybody. What a thing to celebrate. Remarkable. <laughs> it's, just, uh, it's just overwhelming to see the generosity and des the desire of a church to reach beyond and just to serve all the way around this world. Uh, it, it's just absolutely, absolutely overwhelming. Last year in 2023, you gave $266,000 over the $2.8 million goal. Come on, everybody. That's remarkable. You were able then to bless other ministries that had no idea that it was coming. And, and, and so we want to thank you for that. But also, we just invited some of you to be the ones to tell them. And we just have a few of those that you get to see. And uh, I'll tell you, man, it just, I, there's, not, not, there's just not language. Sometimes it's just better to see what you got to do. And so take a look. This is just a, a handful of the people that you were able to add to out uh, in 2023 with your giving and kingdom builders that were not even in the guide. And so thank you so much. Take a look at this and let's celebrate together. Hello. Uh, what's up, David? Hey, how are you? We're just getting situated. Here okay. we go. My name is David Nelms and I'm the founder of the Timothy Initiative or TTI. Victory and the Kingdom Builders are part of a project that we're just launching and we just launched the training of 40,000 what we call Timothy's church planters 40,000 it's our prayer over this year and the next year that we'll see an additional 40,000 churches started and we're just honored to have you guys be a part of it my name is Teresa Golden and I'm the executive director for Refuge for Women Pittsburgh and I'm Ronnie Millich, and I'm the Community Engagement Coordinator for Refuge for Women. So Refuge for Women, we are a national organization that started over 10 years ago, probably closer to 14, um, providing housing for women who've been sexually exploited or trafficked, and find a place where they could just recover and heal, and just getting them into a warm, safe place where we can start wrapping services around them, whether it's detox, whether it's counseling, nursing, um, really just letting them rest and heal and get to the point where they can even think about what the future might look like. Hi, Theo. Hello. I'm a church planter. Uh, I started a church with my brother in Romania, Missio Dei. And uh, the reason we started that church was because the people who were coming to faith uh, were not welcome in the church that I would grow up in, which was a very legalistic church. So in the last, over the last 12 years, M4 has moved from Norway to uh, 17 countries this year. And with the, uh, with the opportunity of going to south africa and australia so the first time in for europe that was the name is going outside of europe so then we started something that's called m4 connect and m4 connect seeks to 
bring Ukrainian uh, Ukrainian uh, Christians and help them plant churches in the different countries they found themselves in. So in Czech Republic, in Romania, in Poland. So we mobilized our network. We were already in 16 countries. We mobilized our network to help them plant churches. My name is Art Broadwick. Um, I am uh, uh, the multi-area director for the Southwest region of uh, FCA. The neat thing about parachurch ministries such as Fellowship of Christian Athletes is that we go to places that you as a church may not be equipped to go. And that's how we partner with you. We, we enter some, some, some places that, that you may uh, not have the resources to go to. I'm Fred Martzoff. I'm from Victory Family Church. Can you guys introduce yourselves and, and tell me the story behind feeling called to be missionaries? Yeah, of course. Uh, so my name is Hannah. My name is Ben. We serve in Kyrgyzstan. It's a small country uh, in Eurasia, or it's actually technically Asia, but it's next to China. It's one of the Stan countries. Uh, it's over 99% Muslim, and there's around 7 million people here. We want to plant the indigenous church and in order to do that we need to be in with the locals uh, we need to understand their native language we want them to know that god can speak to them in kyrgyz he's not the russian god he's not the american god um, he's the god of the kyrgyz people as well that's outstanding well i'm very excited to tell you that due to the overwhelming generosity of victory family church and our kingdom builders program in 2023 we're going to be sending you $15,000 to help you impact the, the, the oh. kingdom globally. Oh, thank you, oh, thank so, you so much. Wow. I'm blown away. Yeah. Thank you so much. That means so much to us. Due to the generosity of Victory Family Church and Kingdom Builders in 2023, um, we are going to be giving you an additional $20,000 today um, to continue <laughs> making such an immense local impact. So thank you for all that you do. Wow. <laughs> kind of was not expecting that. Um, wow. This thank is amazing. You. Yes, thank you. And it really, it takes the kingdom. It takes everyone doing a little part to, to make it happen, sure. you know? And so we are very grateful for our church partners and um, for Kingdom. This is just amazing. Yes, yes. I just wanted to tell you that we're so excited to partner with you and we're giving the Timothy Initiative $25,000 to continue to make an impact, plant churches uh, all over the world and globally. So we're just, we're just blessed to be able to bless your ministry. Well, we are at uh, 25000 Our churches cost about $400. So uh, 20000 is 50 churches that will be planted. And so praise God. And again, I want to thank you guys for, for your, not just your generosity, but for caring for people around the world. You guys are making it possible. So thank you. Well, we're very proud of what you do. And we are so excited to share with you that we are giving Pennsylvania FCA $15,000 today to help continue uh, making an impact locally. And I want to give you that check right now. Oh, that's fantastic. There you go, Art. Okay. Thank you very much. You're very Thank welcome. You very much. We are giving M4 Europe $25,000 to continue making an impact in planting churches globally. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. We are very happy. We are very thankful. Hey, Michelle, can you come up for a sec? Yes. What? What were we discussing this morning? Oh, good. Please, God, your timing is going to be so bad. $20,000. <laughs> it's never speechless in that. <laughs> Thank you so much. We are like a startup. We are new to Pittsburgh. I don't even have makeup on. <laughs> we are new to Pittsburgh and we are fighting the good fight for four years, for two years, for three years. And sometimes it's like, we don't even know if we're gonna make the next payroll. And we're just going through a bit of a troubling spot. And I'm, I'm very transparent about this. And 
She's taught me so much, and one of them is just God's timing, and God will provide. And this morning, I was starting to freak out, and I'm like, God's timing, God will provide. And then I did my deep And there you go. (laughs) And he brought our partners at Victory. So thank you so much, Victory, to all your membership, everybody. I can't believe I'm crying. Okay. Thank you so much. Absolutely remarkable to have the privilege to make this kind of impact. Refuge for Women, they recently uh, purchased a home in the Pittsburgh area, and they're helping women that are trapped in prostitution and, and, and sex trafficking right in their own city. And uh, Jesus said, when you've done it for the least of these, you've done it for me. And so no one's overlooked in God. Kingdom Builders, I want to thank you for reaching into our own community, our own backyard, and reaching women that have been absolutely devastated but through, through sex trafficking and, and prostitution, you are giving them a new life and a new life in Christ. Thank you so, so, so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I just want to just do a little bit of math. And when I do math, people get nervous on our staff. But in Kingdom Builders last year, of course, you gave $3,066,000. But I want to let you know that everything you give to Victory outside of Kingdom Builders, in your general tithes and offerings. We actually do what we teach you to do from God's word as an individual, is that as a church, we give a tithe of that money away as well. And so we actually give above 10% of what you generally give. And so when you take the $3,066,000 plus plus 10% of what you generally give adds another million plus To that number, in 2023, you gave $4.1 million out. Come on, everybody. That's amazing. It's incredible to get the privilege to do that. You know, in 2023, God began to deal with my heart about multiplication. In fact, where Kingdom Builders is concerned, Pastor Steve, uh, way early in the year, February, he began to have a number put into his heart for 2024, shared it with me, and it, it certainly fit my heart as well as we prayed, prayed it out. We just don't come up with a number. We pray about the number that we're supposed to trust God for to expand the kingdom of God in the earth. And uh, so we're so grateful for that. But in 2023, God began to deal with me about multiplication. And when I say multiplication, I, I, I don't mean of your finances, I'm talking about multiplication of people coming to know Christ, people being water baptized, filled with the Holy Spirit, people getting a hold of God, people finding their purpose and making an impact in the earth as a kingdom builder. Marriage is strengthened, marriage is restored, multiplying every imaginable piece of the life of God that is available to every child of God in this church, in your individual life. So when we pray out and speak out multiplication, we're not just talking about those that have yet not come to know God, but that's for your own life as well. Multiplication in 2024 is the mandate God put in my heart, and I'm standing by faith. How many of you would join your faith with me at all of our campuses? Multiplication in 2024. Come on, everybody. So how are we going to specifically multiply in 2024, where kingdom builders is concerned. I'm going to help you with that. I want to be very specific and show you the pathway of how to be a multiplier. And remember this, the scripture said that when you water others, you actually water yourself. As you know, kingdom builders has three areas of focus. And I don't want to presume that for everybody, you know this because folks are always new to victory. Of course, we, we, we have a focus on raising up future Christian leaders. Right here at Victory, we have a residency program where we bring people, literally they are paid, they don't work outside of here. We we let them devote themselves to an incredible path of development so they can step from that place into ministries all over the place, including here. And let me tell you what I've seen in this next generation, that just in in our own reach, these are some of the most remarkable young men and women 
You hear people lament about the generation emerging, but let me tell you, the Christian young men and women that are stepping into this world to bring light in very dark places, I believe these are the, literally, I believe they may be one of, if not the greatest generation in our nation's history, and they are stepping into these things with the power of God, and they are multiplying impact. Thank you for helping future Christian leaders, not just here at Victory, but around the world. Kingdom Builders, thank you, thank you, thank you. We, we, the second part of it is world mission projects. And I'm just going to highlight reach ministries for just a moment. Uh, they're, they're, they, they reach very, very heavily into Vietnam and Cambodia and Myanmar. And they're planting churches. Just last year, I believe there were 18 new churches. I believe it was 18 planted just in Vietnam. Now, what you need to understand that over the last four years, the persecution of the church around the world has escalated in ways that are really horrific uh, the reasonings behind it, I won't go into it, but, but, but there are actual reasons when America kind of drew back in the last four years, uh, not so much on purpose, but just a different focus. It gave permission to people who had been persecuting the church with great fervor. And China began to expand its reach all over that part of the world. And so much so that they empowered the, the army, if you will, and per, gave permission tacitly to the army in Myanmar. To be able to, to they, they had a coup and they overtook the government. And what they began to do, and I'm trying to help you to understand that these are the people that you're supporting as kingdom builders. The, the head of Reach Ministries actually got a hold of us and we were talking and, and he's weeping on the phone. He said, the, the, the army, the, the head of the army who's now running the country, they took drones and they sent them to the Christian enclaves and dropped bombs on them. And these are things that are not reported today. It's not the, the, the media that's, we'll leave it at that. They're, they're not reporting things like this. And I wish I didn't know the, the, when I opened the, the, the photos that he had sent me. One of the, the areas in Myanmar where they help plant churches, the pastor, he sent pictures to, my, to, to, to Scott, the head of Reach Ministries, and, and, and showed literally photographs of their, of their own children blown in pieces. And... And so Scott is in tears. He's, we've got to get them out of here. And so I, I said, Scott, I don't know what we do, but we'll figure something out. We'll pray and we'll take some steps. So he got back to this, and it's very difficult to communicate, got back to them and said, we're going to do, it. We're going to do our best to get you guys somewhere, somehow out of there. And his response was, we're going nowhere. God has called us here in the midst of this darkness and will multiply the kingdom of God in the midst of this horrific. And they stayed put. They, their own children murdered and martyred for the kingdom. Those are the people you're supporting as a kingdom builder. What a privilege. That's just one of so many in the world, in world mission projects. And then local church expansion, the third, is where we expand God's kingdom in our own nation, in our own region our own city, our own backyard, and in, actually in our own church. And the one I want to highlight to you is Newcastle. Newcastle, everybody, tell Newcastle how much you love them. Come on, everybody. We love you guys. So grateful for Newcastle and our Meadville campuses and those with us online. Cranberry, come on, celebrate them one more time. We love you guys. One church, multiple locations, multiplying in Jesus' name. As you know, we if you're a part of Victory, we launched the Newcastle campus at the beginning of the pandemic, three weeks later, it shuts down. We, uh, 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 we launched, if you will, the adoption of the Meadville campus in the middle of the pandemic. And so as Newcastle, God has done great things there, but with, there's so much that he wants to do. So Kingdom Builders in 2024, I'm going to help you to see how you're going to actually have an impact in our own footprint. Now, let me tell you the story a bit about the multiplication. Back in May is when it really began to happen in, 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 in ways that I couldn't have asked for or even prayed for. They were sovereign things God did in my heart. It culminated in, in the month of October of last year where I don't have time to go into the experience, but it felt like cellophane pulled off my eyes and I could see what God wanted to do in a way that before I, had, I actually had limited. Now, let me be really honest with you. When you lead a church or anything, a family, you become the lid for other people, good and bad. You don't do it on purpose, but it can happen very easily. And I began to see that, particularly through the experience I'm about to speak to you about, that I, I was becoming a lid 
for, for not just for you, but even the staff of this church, that I had I'd limited what they could see God doing. Let me explain. So we're in Newcastle, of course, and Newcastle needs a building. Meadville needs one as well. And uh, better yet, let me say it this way, God needs a building in Newcastle, and God needs a building in, in Meadville, and it's his job to advance his kingdom, and we'll talk about that in a minute. So our team back in May located a building in Newcastle, and this is a photograph of the actual uh, church that, that came for sale, and uh, the next picture gives you more of an aerial view of it, and that became available. So our staff came up and they brought me up to, to see the building. And we, you know, of course, going to do all the due diligence you do if you're going to purchase something. And as they're walking through the building, I can see that it's obviously going to be too small for what we need to actually touch Newcastle. But I also could see is that I had not permitted our staff, these are amazing people, to immediately step into the mindset, this is too small. It's not because they didn't have the capacity or the willingness but I had cre- I created the lid by my lack of being able to see the magnitude of the God we serve. So I could see when we, when we came out and we began to talk about the fact that we're gonna, if this is where we belong, we're going to have to renovate and expand. So that was on, I believe, a Tuesday. Uh, and we sat down, I sat down with our lead team on Thursday. I shared that with them. And these are amazing people. And it was like, you know, giving a starving dog a bone full of meat on it. They just, they went fully for it. And, but I'd realized at that moment how easy it is to limit the multiplication of the heart of God for humanity. And so that was a Thursday. The next Tuesday morning, I had an experience that, honestly, I, I didn't pray for it, nor should you. It was a sovereign thing that God did. Many of you have heard me share this, but it bears repetition. It is absolutely critical for you to understand why and how God is going to multiply through you in 2024, not just in kingdom builders, but in every arena of life, your life and the life of those we serve. So it's Tuesday morning. It's May 30th. I wake up. Actually, prior to waking up, I'm, 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 in a, I'm having a dream and I'm reading a scripture. And in the middle of reading the scripture, I wake up and find myself just saying the scripture out of my mouth. Let me read it to you. It's in the gospel of Matthew. And, and, all, and this is where I remember the dream starting, me just reading this scripture. Matthew nine thirty six. When Jesus saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless. Say it out loud, harassed and helpless. <clears throat> If there's anything that defines the world we're in, it's that. And they were like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, those that are harassed and helpless. But the laborers are few. Therefore, pray. Everybody say pray. Hey, how many of y'all think if Jesus gives you direction in prayer, might want to take it? This is how Jesus said to pray about a world that is harassed and helpless. Therefore, pray and ask the Lord of the harvest. Therefore, to send or thrust out his laborers into his harvest field. In the middle of that verse, I woke up and I'm actually saying that out of my mouth. And and I become aware, literally, as I wake, that I'm saying the words. The dream went right into real life and I'm speaking it out. Then I began to say things about the verse. So I grabbed my phone, hit my note app, and hit, uh, you know, where you can record and, and these are the things that I spoke out of my heart, right out of that dream, as God was just dealing with me. It wasn't planned. And here's, here's here, verbatim what I wrote. When Jesus looked upon the fields white to harvest, he cried that they should pray that the Lord of the harvest would send forth laborers into his harvest. Here's the next statement. Jesus did not tell them to pray for money, but to pray for laborers. Now, you have to understand the context of this is Newcastle, expanding the kingdom of God in Newcastle, having the resources to purchase a building and renovate it fully. Everybody say fully. Because let me tell you, anywhere Victory Family Church puts its feet, we are going to be Victory Family Church, and whatever we build is going to be built with the next generation in mind. And all I can tell you one thing, kids ain't cheap. <laughs> not in your house and not in the house of God. But I can tell you this as well, what Cranberry has, Newcastle will have, Meadville will have, 
because that's the mission of this church. And so as, 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 as a, this is how this is coming to pass, though. This is in the context of seeing the building, knowing that it's going to have to be renovated and expanded. Here's the last statement, and this is the one I want to rest on for a minute because it applies to every one of us. Some laborers will go and reap the field, while others will purchase the implements of the harvest. Now, I, in my world, I know what that means. To reap the field, that means people that will do the youth ministry, the student ministry, the children's ministry, parking lot, uh, cafe, fill in the, all the stuff we do, worship, uh, production, every outreach that we do, help your neighbor. That, those are the laborers that are going into the field. I've always seen that and understood it. But the second part, I didn't. He said, now listen, I w- listen God will thrust out financial laborers, listen now, into his harvest field. And they will purchase the implements of the harvest. My best friend grew up a farmer. And he grew up in a small community where no one could afford a, a, a combine harvester, one of the big ones. No one, not one farm could afford it, so they all went together and bought one. And when harvest would hit, they would run it 24 hours a day with lights until everyone's harvest was in. But not one person could afford it because it was so expensive. And what God is saying that there are labors that will do the work, and then there are labors, listen, listen now, that I will raise up. And I will enable them to purchase the mass combine harvesters. Now that, was, that happened on a Tuesday. I shared it with our, our lead team, what I saw in that dream and what I spoke on Thursday. Sunday morning comes. I'm talking to you about multiplication in the kingdom of God. In this context, local church expansion and in our own footprint in Newcastle and will come to pass also in Meadville. So that Sunday morning <clears throat> after the 11 o'clock service, I had to do a meeting in the back with a, it was a situation uh, very specific with a family I had to deal with help some a situation before it started pastor Steve came back and he said hey there's a couple that needs to catch up with you quickly can you step out and I said sure because I'm normally at the fountain after every service here in the Cranberry campus just greeting folks anyway that's what I normally do so of course I was we 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 were just I said hello and I knew the couple the precious couple and uh and said, we have something that we want to give to you all, but, but to Steve and I, Pastor Steve and I were there. And Pastor Steve, of course, is, is, he oversees and leads kingdom builders. And, and she began to tell her story. She said, about five years ago or so, uh, I, I, I came to this church. She, she said, you see, I, I'm a pastor's daughter. And when I became an adult, I kind of walked away from God completely. Ended up getting married. Our marriage fell apart. And I found myself as a single mom, unemployed. And Christmas time, I was talking to my kids about Jesus, not in a, you know, in a sense of serving him, but who he was historically. And she said they didn't know who he was. And she said it overwhelmed me, so I thought I've got to get these kids into church. And so she knew that victory had a focus on the next generation. So she said, I, I brought them here. And I put them in the class. And then I came into the sanctuary. These aren't her words, but mine, basically to kill time. And then go get her kids and go home. While sitting in this room at this campus, God gets a hold of her life and turns her life around. She's serving God with everything she's got. God captured her soul. She ends up getting a job. She has obviously a financial degree because they ultimately in this smaller company put her in the CFO position. And can I tell you that nobody's putting me anywhere near a C or an F or an O. <laughs> I'm just telling you. Victory, we are very, very good stewards of resources. And, and you say, how, how do you guys do that so well? I don't come near them. That's why. I can tell you where we're going. I'm just not the one you want messing with the money, okay? So I don't touch any of it. We have amazing people that do that. She said... Uh, so I end up in this position, and she said, and, and she explained it, but I, you know, look, I didn't quite understand it all, a, a, an acquisition of some sort. And, and I was given what would amount to an amount of money because of her role in the organization. And she said, this is the tithe check, which is 10% of that amount. And she handed it to Pastor Steve and I, opened it, and it was just shy of $1.6 million. Now I want you to see something. I'm talking to you about this is within 
days of the Holy Spirit saying to me, I will raise up financial laborers for my harvest. Newcastle doesn't need a building. The Lord of the harvest does. Meadville doesn't need a building. The Lord of the harvest does for his harvest. Everything we're doing in Kingdom Builders, all these ministries that need the resources, the Lord of the harvest needs them and he's raising up financial laborers. Every person who gives into Kingdom Builders is a financial harvester. But there are some that God has called and set apart to be a financial laborer. And, and this couple is not an anomaly. God is raising up people all the time, both those who he will put into that place and those already in that place. Listen now, that will not act with that kind of generosity and obedience because of guilt or being uh, manipulated, but because the Lord of the harvest thrust them into his harvest field and they're doing their part in the kingdom of God as the Lord directs and leads them. And so when I... I, I, I saw this, this precious couple. This scripture came up in my heart as I pondered it. When Jesus came into the city in Jerusalem, that when he was going to be crucified, they began to worship and praise him. And the Bible said that they began to criticize that. They said, who are you to receive worship? And in essence, here's what Jesus said. If they don't worship me, the rocks and the stones will cry out. Peter comes to Jesus not far beyond, before that, and he said, uh, master, I, I need to pay my taxes. And Jesus said, go fishing. And when you do, the first fish you catch on the hook, open his mouth and there'll be a coin. Take that coin and pay your taxes and mine. How many of you know Jesus paid taxes? <laughs> April 15th or 19th, whatever they made it up now is coming, go fishing. <laughs> now God's not a counterfeiter. He, Jesus said it, some fishing gets a coin. Here's what I want you to see about those two things. God doesn't want rocks and stones worshiping him. He wants people. God doesn't want to meet the needs of the kingdom of God through people going fishing. He wants to raise up laborers in every realm of life, including financial laborers and those who will be called to the implements of harvest. For some of you, you may be like that precious couple five years out from a harvest that you are called to steward you have got to see multiplication in your own life, in every area of your life. Heaven and hell depend upon it for people. God has called every one of us to be a harvester. In 2024, we have a giving goal for, for, for kingdom builders, and it's a multiplied giving goal. And as I told you before, we genuinely pray about this total. It's not something we, we don't do math and come up with it. We pray about it. As I said, Pastor Steve had this come up in his heart very early in 2023. And when this occurred in May, uh, it, it became clear in my heart as he shared it. But then in October, when, when it, like almost, I, I don't have time to tell you the experience, but like a veil was taken off my eyes and I could see. I could see more of what God wanted to do and how he would do it. But I also saw how much I had limited him. You see, if I... If I can't see what he sees for people, if there are things that I've elevated above it because of circumstances or finances, it, it's so easy to do in life. But I became the lid for an amazing staff of people and ultimately for you. I, can, I, 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 I don't want to pretend. I'm telling you honestly. And so I, I turned from that with all my heart and said, Father, I didn't do that on purpose. Please just forgive me. And whatever you want to do, we will go for it with everything we have because you, it's your harvest, not mine. It's your harvest, not mine. I'm just a laborer. I'm a steel worker's kid. I get that. It's not mine. I just have to go in the field, do what he tells me to do. And he said, I will send all the kind of laborers I need. And multiplication of laborers is happening. It's happening right now. And he wants it to abound in your life and in mine. So in 2024, I want to tell you our goal. The kingdom builders go, and we're believing God not only to meet it, but to exceed it. It's a multiplication goal. Our goal in 2024 at all of our campuses together is $6.2 million. Come on, everybody. You see the harvest. Come on. Believe God with us. Now, let me explain to you where that's going. 3.2 million of it will go into what we normally do with kingdom builders, which is a $400,000 increase from 2023. The remaining $3 million will go directly to help purchase and pay for 
We've actually purchased and already paid for the, uh, the building there. But to renovate and the expansion. And, and we're not, listen, we're not done. We'll, 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 we'll add more to it in 2025 plus Meadville. So where's all that coming from? I'll tell you exactly. The Lord of the harvest will thrust out laborers into his harvest field. It's not a fundraiser. When people talk to Pastor Steve and I, and they do very often about kingdom builders, your generosity, and I don't mean this, this is not hyperbole, is spoken of throughout the world. I, it's rarely that I don't meet somebody that if they have any connection to this church and the circles that we're in, and they'll meet Steve or myself, and, and they'll say, you, you got, that's a crazy generous church. How do you do that? And the concept would be, are you doing a fundraiser? Are people making commitments and you're, you're telling them every week what they have? No, no, no. There's only one offering a year for kingdom. One offering a year for kingdom builders. But people in this church hear the, word, hear the voice of God. And year after year, he thrusts you into the, into the harvest field. And people obey God. And we will do the very same thing in 2024. And when we eventually, in 2025, in the fall of 2025, it takes that long to build stuff. When we move into the, into the building in Newcastle, it will be debt-free in Jesus' name. And it will have 1,000 people in it. And Newcastle will never be the same, the power of God moving in that city. That's what we are there to do. Multiplication. Multiplication. The same with Meadville. Because they're already out of space. They're in a theater, which is kind of interesting. That's where Victory started 30 years ago. And they're kind of out of space. You say, well, I guess we need to wait five years. No, we're not waiting. We are going to go at the speed of God, not the speed of the permission of money. And that Lord of the harvest, and here's what I can tell you in 30 years of pastoring this church. Every time we've obeyed what he said to do to reach people, heaven showed up. And when he shows up for the church, that means he shows up for you. He wants to multiply you. He wants to multiply through you. Whether you be a general kingdom builder with your resources and, 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 and God's thrust you into the harvest, or maybe you're one of those that are called to purchase implements of worship. Where generosity and, and God prospering you puts you in the position where, he, listen to me, where he speaks to you. Not somebody coming and the Bible says don't even give out of necessity and don't give out of compulsion. God wants his people to hear his voice. And in 2024, let me tell you what I'm believing God by faith. And I want to pray over every kingdom builder. And I want to pray and make declarations over your life and over the work of God in the earth that we're called to do and in our own backyard. I want you to know in 2024, I'm believing God with everything in me that you will hear his voice. You will not only know God and find freedom, but you will discover your purpose, your place, where the Lord of the harvest has thrust you into his harvest field. And you will obey it and you will make an eternal impact. And this time next year, only God will be able to tell. Only God will be able to tell what will have happened as multiplication in every area. That's why I say by faith, and I want to say these declarations by faith and then pray over your life. That's why you'll hear me say again and again, this campus, the Cranberry campus, will be filled twice in all of our departments from youth into this room twice on a weekend on Sundays filled. Newcastle filled. The building built filled and paid for when we move in. Newcastle absolutely filled. A building in Newcastle, whatever they need, to reach that town, we are going to build it. Why? Because the Lord of the harvest needs it. Now, if you haven't been to victory very long, that might offend you, this, these kind of numbers. And what I would say to you is that the love of money is the root of all evil. When there is a Savior who shed his blood for humanity, and the scripture said that he who spared not his own son but delivered him up, for us all, how shall he not, listen now, with him freely give you everything you need? I want you to know, and if you've been here any length of time, you'll understand this. As your pastor, I have a commitment to you. Is that I will not ask money for permission when God moves. He says multiply, I'm a laborer, I can go labor. There's one thing my father taught me, and he taught me maybe in a way that wouldn't have been real encouraging, because it wasn't living the way you should as a kid, and he could see it. 
He said, boy, you better learn how to work hard because you're not as smart as other people. And he was talking about the way I, I approach life. He, was, he wasn't wrong. Let's just say nobody was giving him the encouragement award. And he taught me to work hard. All I have to do is my part as a labor. It's not my field. And here's what I want you to know as I pray over you. I don't pray, God, bring X, Y, and Z to victory into these ministries. I just simply say this. And let me pray it now over you. Father, you have needs in your harvest. And you said, when we see a world harassed and helpless, which is so, it's everywhere we look. You said, pray that the Lord of the harvest would thrust forth laborers into his harvest field. For the harvest is plenteous, but the laborers are few. You never told us to pray for, the, for, for those in need. You said, pray for those who you will raise up and thrust into, into the harvest field. I thank you for the laborers in all of our campuses that are kingdom builders. As we all do our part, as we don't do math but our part, and we fulfill our mission, I thank you for financial harvesters. Of men and women today that you will raise up to purchase the implements of worship. What we saw and I saw in that dream and it come to pass days later is not an anomaly. It's something you want to do over and over and over again. And in multiplying others, you will multiply us and all of us. So in the name of Jesus, I speak the blessing of heaven over every kingdom builder. A blessing of multiplication that all they set their hand to will prosper. That you multiply their family. You multiply the, 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 the faithfulness of God in the brokenness of, of, of our families. A God of restoration. Restoration multiplied. Marriages restored. And in everything we set our hand to, the Lord of the harvest breathing upon it. Father, I thank you for increase and multiplication in 2024. In Jesus' wonderful name, amen, amen, amen. Come on, everybody. All of our campuses, you believe in God? Come on, let's believe God together. I want to pray and give the opportunity for every person, and we're not, the service isn't over. The last, last 15 minutes of this service, as I'm telling you, is where God, all of our campuses, wants to speak to your heart. The first thing is to ensure that every person under the sound of my voice knows where they'll spend eternity. Jesus said there is a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. And God so loved the world that he gave his very own son. That whoever would believe in him would not perish but have an everlasting life. For God, Jesus said, did not send his son into the world to condemn it, but that through him the world would have life. Every human being has tasted sin. And before a holy God, that makes me separate from him. And God cannot, cannot have sin in his presence. He's holy. Instead of God judging me and separating me eternally from him, he so loved me, he so loved you, that he came and put himself in a human body born of a virgin for one reason, that when he would hang on that cross, the wrath of God do you fell to him. God in his righteousness judged us guilty, and God in his love and mercy came and paid the price. The wrath of God do me and you fell to the Son of God on that cross. And when he hung on that cross, he hung in your place and paid the debt he did not owe and the debt you could not pay. And then he died in your place. He was buried in my place in yours. And then on the third day, he rose from the dead. He conquered death and the price was paid. The spotless son, the lamb of God, paid the debt, the sin debt for humanity. And now every human being on planet earth has the, the, the privilege of giving their life to the one who gave his life for them and he turns no one away. So with every head bowed and every eye closed, at all of our campuses. No one's looking around. Just your campus pastors are observing. With every head bowed and every eye closed, if you would say, Pastor, I don't know where I'd spend my eternity if I died today. Church won't make you a Christian. Being a good person won't do it. Sacraments of a church won't do it, and, and including this church. Only by receiving the Son of the living God who died for you. So with every head bowed and every eye closed, Say, Pastor, I, I, would you please include me in that prayer to invite Jesus into my heart, to be the Lord of my life. I'll follow him from this day forward and the Savior from my sin. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. In a moment, I'll ask you to raise your hand and then we'll all pray the prayer 
out loud together with you at all of our campuses, right where you're seated. Say, Pastor, please include me in that prayer. I want to know when I leave this place today, I'm heaven bound because I've made Jesus the Lord of my life and the Savior of my sin. So with every head bowed and every eye closed, say, Pastor, please include me in that prayer. Would you lift it at all of our campuses right now so I can acknowledge it? Do it right now, and we're going to include you in that prayer to make Jesus the Lord of your life. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. If you haven't raised your hand, just go ahead and do it right now. Right where you're seated. We're going to pray together with you. Right where you're seated. Thank you. Thank you. At all of our campuses, you can put your hands back down. If you raised your hand or you should have, Pray this out loud where you hear it with your own ears. We're all going to pray it together with you. This is not some dead religious prayer. You're inviting the living son of God into your sin-stained life. Turns no one away. He will make you brand new. Your sin debt will be canceled. And when you die, you'll be heaven bound. Because Jesus is the Lord of your life. Pray it out loud where you hear it. We'll pray it together with you. Say, Heavenly Father. Now pray it where you hear it. Say, Heavenly Father. I come to you in the name of Jesus. And I believe with all my heart that Jesus is the Son of God. He died on a cross to pay my sin debt, a debt he did not owe, and a debt I could not pay. Jesus, I receive you now to be the Lord of my life. I will follow you, no turning back. I make you the Savior of my life today. I receive you now. Thank you for coming. I am now a child of God. My sin debt is fully canceled. And when I die, I am heaven bound because Jesus is the Lord of my life. Amen, amen, amen. Give them a hand, would you? Praise God.